We'll start with the Mustard C49S, size 10. We've got some sheer 40 naught uh, grey. So what we want first is just a little tying thread at the front. Like that. Then we need some uh, parapost, because a little loop of that. And we want to tie this in so we have enough to hold at the back of the hook. Right, we go back towards the hook eye first over that little foundation we did. That's about right. And then we go back again over the thorax. And we'll take our scissors and cut that off at an angle. Spin our tying thread anti-clockwise to flatten it and then we just go over the tapered end to back there then we need three moose hairs uh, moose mane hairs and we just tack these in now the colour choice is yours I've got a brown one, a black one, and a white one. So I'll just flatten that tying thread again. Go down the hook shank. This is a, an emerger, as you know. So I want a nice tapered body on this, segmented tapered body. You can use quill if you like. Then we go up here. Just tie that quill down. There we go. And we can lift this and we can go in front just to keep it upright. We need a drop of varnish just on the base of the post. It's a lovely little dubbing needle I got from my good friend Paul Little that he's made with a little acorn on top. Then we'll go up around the post over the varnish drop. I want to go up quite high on this because we want a lot of hackle on it. Go back down just to secure it again. A few turns and then we can go back up. That just stiffens it, stops it flopping over. And go up to that and then we can go, oops, back down again. Then we can just lock that off with a couple of turns there. Take our moose hair. I like to turn my vice just a little to one side, I'll just lock that off. Right, you've got to wrap these parallel all the way up. Let's get that first turn in. Once you've got that in, everything will go well. And as you can see, choosing the correct colours of the moose hair will give you a different effect on the body. Keep them parallel so it works like a quill all the way up. Don't twist them or cross them over. Of course the better the taper on the body the more effect you'll have. But we don't want it too thick. We we'll go up into the thorax and reverse our thread and then we'll tie them off. We'll secure those, gather them up. And trim off the surplus.
now we need a I'm using a silver badger hackle now for this type of hackle which is actually called a paraperfect but a lot of people are now calling a Facebook hackle uh, we need to strip a long stem off the bottom and the back side of the hackle fibres so we want to tie this in with a cross in tying there and then we'll go up the post I want to try and keep I'll just go up and back down again I'll show you that's good back down again oops back into the base of the thorax and we'll just trim off a wee bit of that so it doesn't shoot off over the hook eye back to there I'll just give my thread a round profile and tie that in there and go back now what we want to do is want to keep the base of the post as even as possible and parallel all the way up this will help tremendously when we're wrapping the hackle keep it nice and all the hackle points nice and even so need to go behind the post now oops like so and we need two rubber legs of our choice so we put these on the back of the tying thread and we pull them around like that and we make a couple of turns just to secure that now we want to keep these long because they will help us later take the second one and again around the tying thread it's a lift and trap technique go on the back side and pull this back up to the right position then we can tighten a couple of turns Let's position these that's good and we want to go to the rear of these so lock them off then we need a peacock hurl and just turn the light off it's a little fiddly with the legs in the way but with a little patience You'll manage and then we'll go forward a little bit of that hole that sticking out the back hackle player I find it easier with that more control so what we want to do is just make a couple of turns at the rear behind the legs one more then a couple of turns in between the legs and we'll pull them all back and go forward two or three turns just to finish the thorax and we'll swap the thread around the back remove the legs forward and 
don't want to be cutting our thread so we'll just take that out of the way and get rid of that okay we'll just give that a whip finish tighten that up remove our tying thread and we'll remove that spin it around like so and I'll take my legs bunch them together and I just <coughs> excuse me put a heckle plier on them just to keep them out of the way take our tying thread again oops and go right down into the thorax with it then we can remove that hang it out of the way then free that fibre then we can start to wrap our hackle I make one turn get that first turn in and the second one directly underneath and then we can go down as we go each turn precisely under the previous and all the way down and then when we get to about there take my tweezers and I strip off a little of that hackle fiber so I have a clean finish of hackle stem to work with bring my tying thread back again once over the hackle once underneath then we can remove the hackle plier and before I whip finish I'll trim this off to about the length I'll require it and then keeping all the hackle fibres above the whip finish one there that won't comply but I can trim that off afterwards Of course, not playing with me. There we go. There we are. Important that you don't tie the legs down. Now I can trim off this cycle without cutting off any of the legs. Quick finish, you can put a drop of varnish on the tying thread here if you wish, but with wax thread it's not necessary, I don't think. So, remove that, remove that, and we can turn it around like so. There we can see the one hackle fibre that was trapped by me whip finishing and just pull that off and then the back legs want to be a little longer than the front ones and just trim those off 
like that. We trim these off a little longer than the hackle. And there we have it. That's the finished kicking clink. Uh, it's an excellent pattern, both in running and still water. Just give it a twitch and it really does the legs kick and uh, real attractors. If you enjoy the videos, please like, subscribe, share and thanks for watching.